As of the time of this recording, over 1,100 games have now been announced to be released at the Essen Spiel trade show. We, you and I, have discussed nearly 10% of those games. On well, this episode, I conclude my list of my top 100 Essen picks with numbers 91 through 100. Hello and welcome back to this Pair of Dice Paradise special series listing my top Essen Spiel picks. Now, for this list of my top 100 games, I'm focusing on ones that I haven't covered in other recent videos, as well as games that have a 2019 English release date. So, as you know, that's a lot of games. And there's still more to come, so let's get right into the next one with number 91, which is Nusa Rasa, a self-published economic area majority set collection game, which I may actually have pronounced correctly. Now in this game, players search for opportunities to transform their modest restaurant into a fantastic food franchise. And they'll accomplish this by assigning their workers to fetch ingredients from various places within the neighborhood and take orders from customers while they do it. Nusa Rasa is a simple worker placement game with resource management, area majority, and set collection, which offers two distinct modes that you can play, family and advanced. Both modes have similar gameplay, but both have a different feel, and each requires players to take a different approach while playing. Number 92 is Vampire the Masquerade Blood Feud, a highly thematic, team-based strategic game that plays 4 to 32 players and is run by 1 to 2 storytellers who also interact and play. In the game, you may play as one of the warring vampire clans, such as the Ventru, Tremere, Gangrel, or Torador, or perhaps you'll choose to become one of the human factions fighting for their own desires, such as City Hall, the Mafia, or the Arcanum. Or perhaps you'll play as this basket full of kittens. Blood Feud has been dubbed by its publisher to be a mega board game. Because, unlike traditional board games, this one isn't played at a single table. <laughs> no, no, no. Blood Feud requires a really large room, or two separate rooms with two to four tables to play it. And perhaps even those tables have been pushed together to make one really large location. Or... Maybe they remain separated to provide players with the most total surface area available on which to play. But regardless of your tabletop configuration, one of these tables will feature the cityscape and orders, the map where players move their forces around the city and order them to fight and take control of important territories. And the other game table, or conglomeration of tables, features the council and market where players use their best diplomatic and resource management skills to make sly trades, buy upgrades and player level ups, and make large political decisions that will shape the destinies of teams to determine whether they win or lose. In order to win the game, teams earn victory points through the completion of legacies, which are secret objectives that can consist of all sorts of tasks and achievements earned through gameplay. Tasks undoubtedly like interior design or moving furniture around. Number 93 is The King of All Bards, a humorous medieval dice rolling game of epic songs by Phantasmagoria. Now I know you. All your life, you have chased the ultimate recognition that an entertainer could ever receive, hosting a moderately informative YouTube channel about board games. What? That's not it? Oh, it's earning that elusive bard crown, isn't it? Okay, well then you're in luck, because the time has finally come for you. An epic sing-off that's taking place in all the town's pubs and taverns, which will be your chance to get your hands on that sweet, sweet prize and earn the title King of all bards. Now in King of All Bards, your goal is to become the richest and most famous musician by amassing loyal fans and a fat purse of tips. To achieve this, you'll have a repertoire of song cards at your disposal, as well as some more dubious cards called tricks. Playing the right songs for the right audience is crucial if you're going to build up a fan base and earn their gold, but employing the right tricks at the right moment can sabotage your opponent's performance and give you the upper hand. So, rehearse your best songs, prepare your nastiest tricks, and get ready to smash the competition. Number 94 is Guardians of Legends, a game of ancient adventures and deduction by Luby Edition. Now, since the dawn of time, Guardians have watched over the legends and myths of this world. They have hidden clues throughout the ages, allowing such legends to remain in the minds of mankind. 
And now, you've just arrived on the archipelagos of the Guardians, and upon these islands lie the origins of our entire world. So set off on an adventure to discover the treasure of the Guardians of Legends! Okay, how? Well, in the game, there's two ways to go about this. Either find treasures and legends belonging to other players, or allow your own legends and treasure to be discovered by other players. And this give and take between players is what makes Guardians of Legends sound particularly interesting to me, and why it joins my list of top Essen picks. Number 95 is Space Gate Odyssey, a sci-fi game of building and networking routes by Ludante. The future of humanity awaits you in Space Gate Odyssey, where a system of viable exoplanets has been recently discovered, and the Confederations are flocking into space to colonize them. Like, Confederations are always known to do. You know, I, I actually, I know for myself, I can't visit a system of newly discovered exoplanets without having to wade through a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder crowd of confederations all flocking together to the scene. You know, I just came here to this exoplanet to see the Space Mona Lisa once, once in my life in person. But no, all I can see instead in this crowd is the back of some confederation wearing a shirt that says, I am the Big Dipper. In this two to four player game of development and flow management, you lead one of these confederations and use your influence to send as many of your settlers as you can to these exoplanets. One of the biggest challenges in Spacegate Odyssey, apart from trying to justify polluting our exoplanets with confederations to humble cosmic explorers like myself, is your ability to quickly develop and intelligently arrange your space station. Just imagine how many tables you could push together in the limitless vastness of space. The better you optimize the flow of your settlers to your station and then to your exoplanets, the more of them you can send to the favorable spots and thus gain influence. Will you be able to take over your opponents and usurp control of the new systems that you discover? Systems beyond the stars are up for grabs in Space Gate Odyssey. And now, before I continue, I would like to just apologize for my previous outburst. It's, it's just that these giant faceless corporate confederations out there, you know, gobbling up resources and producing things that we don't need just so they can further line their own pockets at our expense? Oh, it makes me sick. If only there was some sort of analogy that I could use to demonstrate this to you. I don't know. Uh, I'll try and think of one while we watch this word from our sponsor. Hey, welcome back! Number 96 is Freedom by Phalanx, a card-driven, asymmetric campaign war game that's going to require a test of the will, endurance, and tactics between the besieged freedom fighters and the besieging imperial forces who have come all this way just to crush the rebellion, as imperial forces are wont to do. Now, this universal contest is presented through a dramatic history of the siege of a Greek holy city that one, by Ottoman forces during the Greek War of Independence. The battle takes place on two maps, one showing the actual city and the forces involved in the siege, and one with the surrounding areas, highlighting the support that each of them provides to both players. Now, the goal of the invading forces is to manage to get inside the city before the end of the game, or force the citizens to abandon the cause by dropping their morale to zero. The defenders, on the other hand, try to withstand the siege and protect the city long enough for the invaders to abandon their attempt either by deciding to leave on their own or by having their morale drop to zero. The actions of the players are driven by the cards in their hands, which highlight actual events and personalities of that time, all of whom I'm sure are super easy to pronounce. Number 97 is Cultastorm, a cooperative fighting game in the Lovecraftian horror genre by Purple Meeple Games. The publisher's description of Cultastorm states that this game is more than an ordinary board game. This is a Lovecraftian gaming experience with literary and musical dimensions. Oh, hmm. The goal of Purple Meeple Games was to create an excellent board game for those who knew and loved Lovecraft, and to make Lovecraft's work better known to board gamers. The game includes a hardcover book containing more than 500 pieces of high-quality weird fiction illustrated with colorful full-page artwork. Additionally, its narrative expansion is a story-driven game mode in which the stories impact the game itself. But, oh, what's more, Cultastorm also includes a soundtrack crafted especially for the game by one of the most renowned composers of the genre, Graham Plowman giving players some mood music to listen to as they uncover the twisted secrets 
of Arkham. Number 98 is Last Bastion, a cooperative dice-rolling medieval fighting game by Repost Productions. This just in, a handful of heroes has just stolen the powerful relics of the Baleful Queen, and without them, this immortal sovereign is weakened, and recovering them is now her sole purpose. Huh. It's nice to know your purpose. And so, with the High Mages attempting to destroy these heroes, the heroes have fallen back into the Bastion of the Ancient Kings, where they must defend the fort with their lives. The Last Bastion is a cooperative game in which the players take on the roles of heroes defending an ancestral bastion against the monstrous hordes of this baleful queen. The players will struggle together against the game itself and either all win together in victory or else all suffer defeat. No word yet though on why the heroes didn't just use those powerful relics the moment that they stole them to vanquish the baleful queen once and for all at that, at that time. but. Uh, I guess then we won't have a game to play, so... So let's move on to number 99, which is Merlin's Beast Hunt, an abstract strategy game full of cards and dice by WizKids. Most out there, like you or I, know of the tournaments of the knights hosted by Arthur. But, oh, you know what? There's only a few people out there who know of Merlin's Beast Hunt tournament. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you about it right now. In this tournament, Held on a remote island, mages use magical seeds and their own sorcery to create fences of natural elements to enclose and capture various beasts. As one of the competing mages, you will use your share of 80 custom dice as seeds to hold semi-transparent cards that represent fences of bamboo, lightning, thorns, and water. And then you'll use these fences to capture magical beasts like chimeras, unicorns, chiropractors, basilisks, and centaurs. And in the end, the magician who has earned the most points for capturing beasts and building fences wins the tournament, becomes the champion of magic, and doesn't have to help Merlin's girlfriend move next Thursday. And finally, at number 100, we have the game, which I think pretty much sums up this entire video series, Consumption a worker placement game by Colossal Games. And the game, Consumption, Food and Choices, is a worker placement and resource management game designed by a dietitian. Over the course of six rounds, players will engage in various activities on the kitchen tables that they have pushed together, cooking recipes, shopping for ingredients, dining out, all in the pursuit of health and happiness. And in the end, the player that best manages their body's needs will win the game. But for now, as for my body's needs, after combing through lists and selecting my top 100 picks, I think that this body is now ready to check out these games in person at the Spiel Show at Essen. There's where it is, that's why it's called that. And even if you won't be attending the Spiel, well, I hope that this whole series has helped you find some games that you might not otherwise have known about. And until the next time that I find an excuse to rattle off a long list of new and upcoming games at you, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise. Thank you for joining me and uh, Alf Frieda Zane. Whether you're a tabletop gamer or an interstellar life form that just enjoys dice, you'll absolutely adore hanging this playful Pair of Dice Paradise shirt upon your body. Unless you're a being of pure energy that has no corporal form, in which case you could, I don't know, use it as a dish rag. <laughs>